Members of the Hall of Fame, Mrs. Fox, Mrs. Wells, Mr. Feeney, Mr. Dudley, family. 52 years ago, I left Norristown, Pennsylvania. As a 17-year-old aspiring left-hander, scared to death, never been more than 14 miles from my home, and here it is 52 years later, I've come into Cooperstown and scared to death. You know, I think it's a day of thanksgiving to thank the people who made it possible for me to be here. My mom and pop, I wish they could be here because they were the greatest parents that anybody could ever have. I want to thank, if I could have seen God one week before I got married and had written down on a piece of paper what I wanted for a wife, he couldn't have given me a better one than the one I have after 47 years, my wife, Joe. Here with her is my daughter, Laura, my son-in-law, Billy, and my granddaughter, Emily. I want to thank the Veterans Committee for making all of this possible. Without their support, it could never have happened. I thank them from the bottom of my heart. You know, a few months ago, a man that is very, very dear to my heart announced that he was going to be selling the baseball team. What would baseball be like? Because in the last 50 years, there was an O'Malley there. He's one of the most unique owners that anyone could ever want to work for. I love him and his family very, very much. I would like for him to be recognized him and his sister, Terry, and her husband, Rolly. Peter. There's a man I wish he could be here today, but unfortunately, he couldn't make it because of his health. He was my mentor. I love him very, very much. I only wish he could be here because he taught me so much about the game of baseball and about life. My heart goes out to him. I know he's here in spirit. There's none other than the great Al Campanis. In 48 years, I served under two owners, Walter Malley and Peter. Three general managers, Buzzy Bavese, Al Campanis, and Fred Clare. Three farm directors, Fresco Thompson, Bill Schweppe, and Charlie Blaney. I really enjoyed working for them. They were wonderful people. Trainers. I want to thank my coaches. I want to thank Bill Bueller for all the service he gave to the Dodgers, one of the most dedicated men I ever met. There's two guys sitting out there that have very been played a very important part in my life, and I'd like for them to, to be recognized. Rob Dato, the greatest baseball coach in the history of college baseball, and Ralph Avila, the vice president of the Los Angeles Dodgers. When you honor me here today, you honor my family, you honor the organization that I have represented for 48 years. I love the Dodgers. And to all of you fans, without you, there would be no people like us. 
You know, I've said time and time again, this game does not belong to the owners, nor does this game belong to the players, and I'll tell you why. You could have the greatest stadium in the world and the best ball team, and if nobody goes through those turnstiles, we've got nothing. We thank you for your support. We need you. We want you to continue supporting the greatest sport in this country. Baseball. You gotta love it. You know, as I stand here in front of all of these great Hall of Famers, some of them were my idol, Ted Williams, Al Lopez. Some of them were my competitors. But I want to say this, we need more role models in this country. And these gentlemen that he are here with us are the greatest role models that baseball could ever have. I knew many of them, and whenever I saw them, I held them in high esteem. I put them on a pedestal because they did so much for our game of baseball. We appreciate it, we love them, and we respect them very, very dearly. And may they continue to walk around and spread the word Major League Baseball in this great nation of ours. You know, if I, I, I said this time and time again, if, if God had planned for me to be a high school baseball coach, I think my objective would be to try to impress upon the youngsters playing for me how important it is for them to get a good education. And I believe that's more important than winning. Or if God had planned for me to be a college baseball coach, my objective would be to try to impress the youngsters playing for me how important it is for them to prepare themselves for the way of life. That's more important winning. But when you're a manager of a major league baseball team, you can forget those two philosophies. You gotta win. And if you don't win, like many, you'll fall by the wayside. And to tell you how bad I want to win, a few years ago we were playing in Cincinnati. I got up Sunday morning and I went to church. And who came in and sat right next to me was the manager of the Cincinnati Reds, Johnny McNamara. Now I knew why he was in church, and he knew why I was there. And at the conclusion of the Mass, we walked out the center aisle together. I'm thinking, man, I got to beat this guy today. And as we approached the front door, he said to me very quietly, wait for me outside, Tommy, I'll be right out. I said, okay, Johnny. And I said, where's he gone? The mass is over. And I watched him, and he went over to that side of the church. He knelt down and he lit a candle. And instead of me going out the door, I went over to that side of the church. And I went in front of the altar, and I waited. And when he left, I went down and I blew that candle out. I knew one thing, he was not lighting that candle for a dead relative. <laughs> and all throughout the game I kept hollering, hey Mac, it ain't gonna work pal, I blew it out. <laughs> and we clobbered him that day, 13 to two. And Johnny Mac last year went to Rome and he sent me a card. And all that it said, try blowing this candle out. <laughs> My four brothers are here today, ladies and gentlemen. I want them to stand up. My brother Eddie, my brother Harry, my brother Morris, and my brother Joey. You know, sometimes when you think all of this is great, you stop and wonder. I think Pee Wee Reese said something to me to put life in the right perspective. I can remember when the 55 Dodgers, which I was a member of, we were being honored in Shea Stadium. And when they called us out to the foul line, I happened to be standing next to the great captain, Pee Wee Reese, that we all loved. And I said, Pee Wee, 
If someone had walked into the Dodger clubhouse in Ebbets Field in 1955 and said to you, Pee Wee, one of these 25 guys will be managing the Dodgers to a world championship in the year 1981, put them in the order of who do you think it would be. I said, you know where you'd have put me, Pee Wee? 25th. He said, no, you're wrong. I said, where would you have put me? He said, 24th. I said, who would you have 25th? He said, Amaros, he couldn't speak English. <laughs> you know, there's three people there I'd like for them to be recognized. Two great basketball coaches in this country, Raleigh Massimino and Mike Fratello. And one of the great actors in the history of Hollywood. How about it for Tony Danza? I want to congratulate Phil Negro for this tremendous honor for him because I was fortunate enough to be his manager for two weeks when we went to Japan with an all-star team. I'm very, very proud of Phil Negro. I wish him nothing but the best. But you know, I can remember this growing up when I was about 15 years old. I can say this from the bottom of my heart. I was a, I was a Yankee fan, Whitey. And I used to go to bed and I used to actually dream that I was pitching for the Yankees. And I looked and Bill Dickey was giving me the signs and I looked and DiMaggio and Garrett were on the field. And then all of a sudden I'd feel my mother shaking me and saying, wake up Tommy, it's time to go to school. I did not want to leave that dream. I wanted to stay there because the dream was so real. After what is happening to me now, it's unbelievable. This is the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my lifetime. I've been fortunate enough to win world championships, Cy Young Awards, MVPs, nine rookies of the year, all-star games, but they come and go. But the Hall of Fame is eternity. And I thank God for all of it. And I feel that it won't be too long that my mother will be shaking me and saying, wake up, Tommy, it's time to go to school. I am living a dream. Thank you.